All right, so Sun is a movie from this year, 2021, uh, starring Andy Matichak, Mill Hirsch, and Luke David Blum, uh, which plays the kid. Um, and there was a lot of talk about this because Andy Matichak is in it. You know, she's in Halloween and Halloween Kills, and Halloween Ends. I'm assuming she'll be in that too. Uh, but um, and so yeah, she's obviously playing a mother here. And going into this, I was thinking, how is it going to work for those who have watched her play a teenager in Halloween? And you're going to watch this where she plays a mother, and then you're going to go back to thinking she's a teenager. It's kind of weird. I kind of wish that actors, if they're playing teenagers, stay with that teenager role until you're done with it, then move on. Because it's kind of weird, you know? But, uh, so this is a Shutter movie. Shutter movies have been hit or miss. There's only been maybe one or two. There's been two. Downrange and Host that really I hadn't cared for. Well, make that three. Uh, no, I didn't care for this one. Um, all the hype. Maybe it was because there was a lot of hype with this. Like, oh, you know. I'll, I'll tell you this. Any matter check? does a good job in this role. Very good job. Uh, I didn't care for the kid. Emil Hirsch is okay, but I figured out the twist with him way early in the film. Like, for me, it was... Like, it was so easy to figure out the twist with him. And it wasn't even like I don't know. Like it was it was some it wasn't really like I figured it out, figured it out, but then I thought of it in my head and when they revealed it I was like, Oh, okay, I thought of that. So if I could think of that very easily it's not that it's not a big twist. Although some people think seem to think that it is a big twist, well So the story revolves around Laura, we'll call her Laura. Uh, and we start, uh, she's, she's all dirty, like she's escaped from a cult or something, and she's, uh, pregnant, and she gives birth in a car, and eight years, we then join her eight years later, so, the actress is 27, I think 26 when she filmed this, so eight years earlier, she would be 18, right, 18, 8, 9, 18, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, yeah. So, that fits. That fits. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so, yes. So, one of, now there's another thing that didn't work for me in this film, and that is they played on whether or not the what she experienced is what she experienced like with the cult and everything there's a lot of playing on you know, oh she was in a mental institution and she's not thinking straight and none of that cult stuff happened but i just um, every time they try to bring up try to steer us in the direction that's all in her head i just kept thinking back to no no because she was barefooted, dirty, in a weird robe thing, running from somebody. Two people chased after her. It's real. Now you could say, but what if that was in her head? Sure. But not the clothes that she wore. I'm just saying. And her memory's not as good, because when she... she Speaks to her old friend Jimmy. She thinks that her father was the one that raped her. But he says it was the demon. Uh, but we're getting a little ahead here. So, eight years later, and David, that's the kid's name, he's starting to act weird. Uh, he's starting to succumb to some illness. Uh, so they take him to the hospital, and they can't find anything wrong with him. Which, okay. But the doctor is like, well, there's nothing wrong with him. And she keeps asking, well, we got to do something. We got to do some kind of test. You know, what if there's something that, uh, uh, 
Well, what if it's something that can't be traced? Well, I don't know anything about that. You're a doctor. You're supposed to know about There are some drugs and stuff that can't be traced. So just because you can't trace it doesn't mean it's not there. Although we do find later that the doctors are a part of the cult. And yes, I'm believing the doctors are a part of the cult. I believe that everything she sees, except for maybe the people in her house, is real. Maybe she did have some kind of psychotic break from all the trauma she faced. But I think the doctors were in on it. Because the doctors do take her away for a while. And then he's fine all of a sudden. And, uh... Yeah, so there's this detective. The cop, his name is Paul. And, um... He's trying to help them. In more ways than one. And it was at one point... Like, she keeps asking for him to stay around and everything. Um, and it was at one point where, uh, okay, i um, trying to read that and I'm going to wait. But um, there was a point where I thought of something that actually led to me figuring out the twist. So there's a moment when they get back to the house where they're making out. And she comments, oh, having your arm, he goes, oh, uh, uh, drug dealer stabbed me, something like that. And I was like, like, okay, that's, that's kind of weird. Why would they point that out? Something's not, something's not right. And then, when they reveal later, this made me think that, you know, why would they point it out? Why would they, you know, put an arrow to that? You know, put a target on that? Why would they call it out? Maybe something's not right with him. And then I figured it out. Alright. There's a scene. She takes the kid away. Okay, first of all, this is... She takes the kid out of the hospital. Where does she go? Right across the street from her house. To her, her friend that babysits the kid. I forget her name. I don't really care. And she goes, I gotta go to my house, I gotta get some stuff. Lady, the last place you wanna go is your house. But she goes over there, when she comes back, she finds David eating her insides. And that's when it clicked. I'm like, oh, Paul's in on it. Because he's, he cut himself open to feed the kid and that's why he was, he was, uh, uh, better all of a sudden. And the weird thing is, when they go back at the end and they do all the revealing, they don't go back to that. Maybe they forgot to film the scene, or they didn't think about it, or maybe they just didn't put it in the film. I don't know, but they don't go back to it. You'd think that would be one of the revealing scenes that he... Because they show it later, cut it open. But, like... They don't go back to that, but that's obviously what happened. So yeah, we get more, you know, is she, is she not? And he and his partner, and I thought about this, because once they started doing the investigation, I'm like, okay, maybe he's not in and on it. Maybe I'm just overthinking it. But as I'm going on, I'm thinking, well, what if, what if they're just doing, showing us this scene, not only to push us away from him, but what if, because Steve, his partner, is also there. So... What if it's Steve learning about the cult and everything and learning about the stuff? They say it's a pedophile cult that was arrested, so there's no one left, but cults got secret members. The doctors, Paul, um, so there are secret members out there. I thought the neighbor lady was going to be one of them, you know, but, uh, yeah. So she's going from hotel to hotel at this point, trying to keep him safe, and... Uh, he's starting to convulse and stuff. And I, this is where I started to be like, okay, this is getting too repetitive for me. Because, oh, he's sick. And then he's fine all of a sudden. And he gets, starting not feeling good, takes him away from the hospital, eats the lady, and then he's fine. And now he's getting sick again. And I'm just like, look, you don't want to over-repeat yourself in a film. And it was starting to get over-repetitive. 
So now she has to bring this pimp guy in who... And this fucking irritates me, all right? And I don't know why, but it really irritated me when I saw this. So this guy, he's got one of those holes in his throat, and he's smoking through it. And I'm at a certain point, that if I was in this position, if I was smoking so much I had to put a hole in my throat to fucking breathe, I'm going to quit fucking smoking, all right? That, that's the absolute end of it all. But yet, you, I, I hate that. It's ignorance. It's ignorance. It's fucking ignorance, and I hate it. So anyway, uh, she lures him in with the promise of sex, and then uh, her son comes in, crawls, kills him, and she's trying to frame the uh, the cult on it, you know, which is smart. Uh, then uh, Paul and his partner arrive at Jimmy's place to find Jimmy dead, and we're supposed to believe it was... Uh, Supposedly it was Laura, or their final real name is Anna. And for the last time we see Anna there, she's just talking to him. We later find out, of course, it was Paul. So, then we're at the hotel room. She hears a noise, and she starts firing a gun. And she shoots three officers, including Steve. And then runs off. And she goes back. She calls Paul and says, I gotta go back to the beginning. This is another clue. She goes to the compound where the where the where the um, the cult was, and she starts to summon the demon. Paul shows up with a few cops. How did Paul know where it was? You could say, "Oh, well, he looked at the file." Yeah, but maybe that's what he told the other cops. Because then, right there, I'm like, he got there awfully fast, and then. You know, he shoots her in the head. And that was that was it for me. I'm like, no, he's in on it. He's in on it. Because, you know, she has a knife in her hand. She's going to kill the kid. She thinks the only way to save him is to kill him, which... She's probably right in this situation because he's a demon child. And from what we hear of his dreams, the Antichrist. But he shoots her in the head. To me, as a cop, he would shoot her in the hand to knock the knife out but he shoots her in the head because he needs her dead so that they can do whatever they're going to do with the kid and then we cut to to the hospital room and he goes it's okay i'm going to protect you and make sure you're okay i'm like is this the twist we're supposed to be the twist and then there's the lady is called away and i thought oh the mom's alive and now she's going to escape no that's something that's just a distraction because then he cuts open his arm and he bleeds into the kid's mouth and takes a chunk of his, his fat or body, muscle, whatever, and feeds it to the kid. And then, end film. Oh, he's like, no, first of all, there's, oh, your your dad is here, and it's the demon. And they hug, he goes, daddy, and then the film ends. And I went, yeah, I don't think I like that movie very much. You know me, I don't like downer endings, and I feel like maybe a better ending would be if she killed the kid. I understand they had to do the twist with Paul, but they could have done that earlier. You know, what if Paul arrived by himself, and he's acting like a cop, but she's still determined to kill the kid, then he reveals himself... He's like, you can't do that. You'll mess everything up. What? And they get into a fight, a scuffle, and it ends up shooting the kid. Right? The kid dies. And then you have Paul shoot himself. Because he failed to protect him. And then we can end on that. It's a down ending, but at least it solves the problems. But, as it is, I just, I don't know, it just didn't sit with sit right with me. I just didn't care for it. It's not a bad movie. I think the performances are good. There's good gore. But, when I can pretty much figure out the twist from a certain point of the film, eh, you know, 
Uh, it's going to be a middle of the road for me. I really, really didn't care. No. Not for me. It's one of the lesser shutter movies in my opinion. And I had such high hopes for it too. Maybe that's why it kind of fell down. But uh, yeah, so what are your thoughts on, son? Let me know in the comments below. I almost dropped it. Thank you for watching. I've been Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.